Your first part is not the first part of production. Your first part is a prototype, and prototypes don't often have much to do with production. So if you've made a product, a product that can be 3D printed, very often you are still quite a ways away from actually having a product that is production ready. When Johnny Ive designs the first iPhone on a piece of paper, he is far away from what will finally be produced because there are limitations within production that do not apply to the prototype. When you're making a prototype, you basically have unlimited restrictions. You have unlimited budget. You have unlimited time comparatively to make this one single piece. You might build certain parts by hand. You'll hand solder some components. You'll 3D print the outer case with your special filament, with your special printer that has been tuned just the way you like it with your special settings. Now, you would say that in context of 3D printing, all of that information should be transferable, sending over the settings, sending over the filament that is used. But this is very often not the case. The prototype that you make with your own 3D printer very often is not mass producible. The material might be a type that is from a supplier that is in low supply or inconsistent. You made it with a single spool, but if you're going to mass produce it, you have to make it with hundreds, if not thousands of spools. So you have to ensure that the manufacturer can maintain constant color quality, which isn't always the case. You have made it with your printer, which if it's a DIY machine is probably modified in some way that does not apply to production machines. So there will be a setup process where we attempt to match what your original prototype was. Your special settings may not apply to the particular machines being used because it has retraction settings or features that are just not viable for the machinery or not viable for mass production. Even though you can produce one part reliably with your machine does not mean you can produce millions of parts reliably with thousands of machines. And then, of course, there is the actual design of the product itself. When you are prototyping a product, it doesn't really matter if you have to remove support in a couple of places. But if that is then carried on into production, it can radically increase the cost of the part. A small amount of support removal for a prototype is nothing. A small amount of support removal for thousands of pieces is a horrible, horrible problem. So what has occurred with the prototype is basically irrelevant to what will occur inside of production. Here at Slant 3D, whenever we have a new project, we go through and we do what are called production prototypes. These are basically parts that are run through the gamut and tested through a broad range of situations and circumstances, ensuring that bed leveling is consistent, generating kind of a QC demonstration document, trying out different materials and colors with different variations of print settings to find out which ones are the most robust in order to ensure that print reliability is high, but quality is at a stable level. As such, when we make a prototype, we do not make one. We often make at least a few, if not dozens, in order to iterate through the process and tune in every single setting so that it is as robust as possible. During this process, we would probably also give you design feedback about how to modify your part so that it is actually mass producible. Just because you were able to print it on your home machine does not mean that it is producible. It's like the difference between an artisan carving a chair from a block of wood and a factory actually making a chair. You have to use completely different processes, completely different standards, and have different expectations. Johnny Ive, when he designs his iPhone, very often does not get what he originally designs because he runs up against physics, cost realities, and overall human joy around having to produce some of these parts. Have a great day, everybody.